Look, Premier, I understand you had an experience recently as well, somewhat similar to mine, where a family member of yours required an ambulance uh, and the wait was so long that you had to call the Health Minister, Brad Hazard, and he then called the Ambulance Commissioner to get an ambulance to go to your house to help that family, family member. Is this right? No, that's not true at all. Um, obviously, um, my, my wife was um, sick at the time, was paralysed in bed, and um, I actually spoke to Brad Hazard in relation to that uh, matter, and, um, and, and uh, an ambulance was organised in, in the ordinary course. So your wife required an ambulance and she called Triple O, but it took so long yeah. to come that you had to ring the Health Minister, Brad Hazard? No, that, that's, not, that's not correct. I, my, my wife called me coming back from an event and I spoke to Brad to get his advice in relation to the situation and Brad was actually, randomly enough, uh, with the head of ambulance at that point in time. And um, they said to me, go home, be with your wife, and uh, which I did. Um, and an ambulance was called and um, we went to hospital where she was there for a number of days. I hope she's OK, but just to be clear, it was the ambulance commissioner who called an ambulance to go to your house. I'm not aware of that. What I'm aware of is the conversation I had with Brad Hazard and, uh, and to Don Morgan, who's the head of ambulance in New South Wales, and they said, look, you go home um, and, uh, and wait for an ambulance. So the health minister or the ambulance commissioner called the ambulance for your wife? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure of those details. What I do know is that I, I called Brad Hazard, spoke to Don Morgan, and their advice was, no, you should get home. Uh, she'll need an ambulance, and an ambulance was called out. Do you understand that most people in New South Wales wouldn't have the access to call the health minister or the ambulance commissioner when they need an ambulance, that one in 10 people are waiting more than an hour for an ambulance, that my one-year-old was nearly left without a mother because an ambulance took two hours to come and, and you were able to get the ambulance commissioner and the health minister to organise an ambulance to your house? Well, I certainly didn't ask for um, any favours in relation to that, Shari. I'd spoken to Brad and, and the and who was randomly enough in a meeting at that point in time uh, with Don Morgan. Uh, they, said, they said you should go home um, and an ambulance was called out in the ordinary course. So at no point had you or your wife or any member of your family initially called for an ambulance and was told that it would take about 40 minutes or there'd be a long wait? Not that I'm aware of, no. OK. I mean, you've been defending the ambulance system during this election campaign, you know, when, when you've just had your own experience of having to get the ambulance commissioner involved to get an ambulance to your house. Do you think that was in any way misleading? Well, I, I reject the proposition in the question, Shari. Um, that was not the situation that occurred. I was on the way uh, from an event. I actually called the health minister for advice in relation to what I should do. As a friend, he said, you, uh, he's then put on Don Morgan, who, as I said, uh, was the, um, he was the he's commissioner. Not, they advised would, me to go why home. Why would you call the health minister for advice instead of a, a doctor, respectfully? Well, Brad and I are very close. I often speak to Brad on a whole range of issues in relation to uh, matters such as that. That's certainly not uncommon. I certainly wasn't asking for any special um, advice or consideration in relation to that matter, and he will support that, as will Don Morgan, the head of uh, Ambulance New South Wales. OK, let's move on to a range of other issues. Uh, the energy market operator has warned that New South Wales faces looming blackouts. Uh, power bills are also going up. What can you do to help families? And why won't you consider the proposition put by Labor leader Chris Minns, uh, Chris Minns to buy... Um, a rearing power station if necessary, if that's what's required to keep the lights on? Yeah. Well, the first thing I'd say there, Shari, is uh, under our policy, there'll be $250 off e every energy bill uh, in New South Wales for every family, in addition for that, every household in New South Wales. In addition, we have a roadmap, a long-term roadmap, that will drive $32 billion of private sector investment. And one particular area that we're focused on is ensuring um, that uh, we get the Narrabri gas pipeline up and running as quickly as possible. And I've certainly met with Santos and the planning department here in New South Wales because that project has taken way too long uh, to get off the ground. Uh, currently, um, surveying is occurring in, uh, in that area around Narrabri, uh, but that pipeline itself uh, will supply up to half uh, the needs of businesses and households in New South Wales. So under our approach is immediate relief, 
uh, under Labor here in New South Wales, one and a half million families will miss out um, in relation but to that relief. But there is still an energy uh, but issue. But ultimately, it's if, about making. If if EMO is warning that there might be blackouts and that there's um, an issue with energy reliability, there is still an issue here. Do you think ideology, um, particularly when it came to Matt Keane as energy minister, has got in the way of a confidence of supply? Not at all. We're ensuring that um, you know we protect electricity today and into the future. Um, long term, a long term approach to drive. Uh, renewable energy into the future and that's part of the transition that we have in New South Wales but at the same time ensuring uh, that we have the support today and our plan does exactly that here in here in New South Wales short-term relief for families and households and at the same time driving 32 billion dollars of investment into the future uh, but gas is going to be a critical part of that and there's been too much talk in relation to the Narrabri gas pipeline. I've called that in as, as critical infrastructure. There's a reservation policy associated um, with that project and I'm completely committed to getting it up and running as soon as possible. OK, the economy internationally is looking volatile. We've seen uh, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and also the acquisition of Credit Suisse. What can you do uh, to help protect people in New South Wales um, and our financial institutions as the economy is looking so difficult this year? Well, we've got to continue the, the strength of the New South Wales economy here in our state, um, Shari, and that's why through our policies of lower taxation, less regulation, continuing to build the infrastructure to make a difference to people's lives is what will set up our people uh, for dealing with the future, ch the current challenges we face, but also those challenges that are coming our way. And as a state, we've certainly navigated through some pretty uncharted waters, uh, you know, during the pandemic lost over 200,000 jobs, we've recovered all of those. Yes. Um, and at the same time, kept businesses going. So confidence is key, particularly as those global headwinds are coming our way, where businesses we know, uh, not just around the country, but globally, um, are, are concerned and jobs are at risk. Uh, so ultimately keeping downward pressure uh, on taxes, continuing to uh, free up businesses to, to invest in the capital, to invest in labour, uh, that's how we can navigate these difficult challenges that are facing our country. Now, you, the poll race is tightening. It's neck and neck. You could very well be elected uh, Premier on Saturday. If you aren't, are you looking at a future career in federal politics? You're still young. You're uh, early 40s. Uh, no, no, Sherry, I'm not. I'm very much focused on this job. That This is a uh, being Premier of the, of the largest state in the country is, is a very important job and one that I'm very humbly and privileged to, to serve the people of New South Wales and uh, we've worked tirelessly over our time in office to take uh, New South Wales from a very dark place to a very yeah. strong place. There are economic headwinds coming our way in those challenges and I'm very much focused uh, on the future here in New South Wales. Yeah. Well, commentators uh, like Joe Hildebrand wrote today that you could pull off a, mil a miracle victory uh, like Scott Morrison did in 2019. Do you think you can win? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not here to win for myself, Shari, or, or win for the Liberal Party or the National Party. I'm here to win for the people of New South Wales because I know that it's our plan uh, that will ensure that New South Wales families are looked after today and, and ultimately that we set up the long-term security of every single person across New South Wales. So uh, we've been prosecuting that case on the campaign trail. There's a few days to go and we'll continue to get that message out. All right. Premier Perrottet, thank you very much for your time this evening. And for viewers, save the date for the final must-watch showdown of the New South Wales election campaign. Don Perrottet and Chris Minns face off in front of undecided voters tomorrow at the Sky News Daily Telegraph People's Forum.